Okay, let's see how this looks. Hello you guys, welcome to this video. So I just got back from Japan and I wanted to start this video here because there is a photographer, his name is Sean. He is coming over to my house to photograph a Japanese ceramics company's products. And it's pretty cool, he's gonna bring a prop stylist to work on the shoot too, so I get to like see that in action. I haven't been at a shoot before, like with a prop stylist, so I think this will be a cool thing to experience. I also get paid because this is like a shooting location. So yeah, that's happening in like five minutes. And then later in this video, I wanna show you guys the stuff that I got from Japan. I didn't really do like a good job of showing everything that I got in my Japan vlogs. Um, so yeah, I'm working on editing the vlogs now, but they'll have been out by the time you're watching this. Sure, just as decorative? Yeah. Okay. It has smoked salmon and that would be easy to yeah, work one. with, I think. Yeah, this is like an anomaly brand. The store is the designer of the line. Of the salmon porcelain? Yeah. Oh. Right. That's why. So let's do a tour of my ceramics and plant stuff that I brought home from Japan. So one of my main goals for going to Japan was to bring home like ceramics for my plants. So I kind of got a lot. One of my favorite ones that I was able to bring home is this. It's like this broken rock pot and I love how it's lower in this area. That way you can kind of create like a hillside looking thing with um, top dressing and I used moss. And the moss so far is still alive. I just planted this maybe a little over a week ago now, and I'm spraying it every day. And then I planted an Everfresh tree in it that I imported. It lost all of its leaves because I didn't do a very good job at the acclimation process. I think it's still alive, and hopefully it'll come back. From the same store, I bought this large metal saucer because I thought it would be a good display stand for this pot, and also um, act as a saucer for it. Okay, and then next, the sea urchin vase, and I've never seen anything like this, so here is like the vase hole. Um, and what's really cool about it is that you can stand it on any of its spikes. You just have to figure out how to balance it. So it can go like facing forward, facing up, or you could even like have it, the vase part on the bottom and then it can just be a cool sea urchin sculpture. And then to go along with it, I got this fossil looking stone stand or like coaster. Um, so that way these spikes don't damage the furniture that it's on but I think it complements it really well. And then I really like this one. It uh, reminds me of a gem and I love the dark green color and then the glaze is really nice too. So I'm thinking of making like a whole video where I plant plants in all of these pots. Um, I have some cool ideas from Japan, mostly like cactus, succulents, codex plants um, that I'm gonna use in these pots because they're too small really for tropical plants. Um, since tropical plants will like take up too much water and then outgrow the pot too quickly. So yeah, I'm thinking of pretty much putting all like drought tolerant plants in these pots. This one is also from Toki. I love the texture of this one. I don't know, it just, I've never seen anything kind of like this before. Yeah, I think I want to put like a, a Patripodium in here or Dorstenia or like an Adenia. This other pot I also got from Toki. I really like the pale green color and then also has a matching saucer. I've never seen a glaze like this and a color like this. And it reminds me of like a dragon egg or an alien egg. And I think it's pretty cool. I'm thinking of putting like a compact bromeliad in here, maybe a red colored one or like a pink one. I think would go well with the green. I think that's all we have from Toki. Oh. Wait, actually, I also got this book from Toki. It talks about their different ceramic lines that they have. I purchased this kind of for inspiration and to look at every now and then if I want to get inspired or need help with some ideas. And then this one I got from a store called Ciro. This dish is separate, but I thought it worked well with this pot. I just like the shape of it with the pot. And so yeah, this pot is pretty cool. I'm thinking of putting something like 
It's sort of bonsai-like, maybe something that looks like a tree and perhaps it's cascading down or it's like growing up and then bending. I think that kind of look looks really good with these like shallow wide pots. And then these two pots I got from this is Shizen. The ceramicist was actually working the counter and she was like, oh, these are my pots. Like, thank you for buying them. And they're really cute. I like the colors. I think I'm gonna put moss in this one, kind of like how I had that other moss pot down there. And then this one, some type of succulent. And then I have this shallow dish. I want to put a kokedama in here. So I wanna make a kind of large kokedama. But for now, I've just been putting my moss ball in here. It looks kind of cool. But that's sort of the idea, um, like a large kokedama and then a plant coming out of it. Okay, so that is it for ceramics. But I also got this glass thing. So it is a glass vase that has this hanging point on it. So that way you can hang it from a nail and then you can put um, like a flower in here. So it's like a wall hanging vase. Oh, and then I really like this. So this is a vase that's made specifically for ficus leaves. So you take a ficus cutting and you place it in and this won't turn into an actual plant. It'll just stay as a leaf, but it's gonna stay alive pretty much forever. And the ficus leaves end up growing roots from where they were cut. But yeah, it's starting to grow roots. It takes a while, but um, they are developing. And then do you see how there is an opening on the glass on both sides that allow the leaf portion to fit in perfectly and then it holds it still. I got this one at a random shop that I walked by and I just thought this was really cool. It was also only $3. And this shop also had this funny looking, I think it was a propagation vase that looked a lot like something else. I'll put it right here for you guys. I bought this Dua shallow tank terrarium thing. I have some plants that I wanna use for this. I wanna use a Deuteroconia brevifolia for this. And I got really inspired by one of the display tanks at ADA. So I want to create something similar that's kind of like a rocky landscape. And I already have like all the hardscape materials and the plants to do it. And ADA products in Japan are so much cheaper than they are in the US. In the US, pretty much everything ADA is double the price that it is in Japan. So I also bought um, a stand for my Dua Terra base. I can show you guys right now. And I bought a light for it too, because I've been wanting to buy it, but I just didn't want to spend the money because um, it's really expensive in the US, but it's not, it wasn't that expensive in Japan. So yeah, it comes with the stand and then the light is magnetic or it doesn't come with the stand, I bought the stand. Uh, I don't know why I said that. But the light is magnetic, so it attaches to the top. And it just looks really seamless with all the other ADA products. Um, and then also, on the screen, Chris and I have been watching a lot of Carrie Can Read. Pretty big fans of her right now. But yeah, other than that, I didn't really buy anything else from Japan. It was mostly just ceramics. For anyone wondering how I packaged them so nothing broke, at the stores, they package them for me in bubble wrap and I just fit them neatly in my carry-on suitcase and then I was just like really careful with my carry-on and then everything was fine. Other than that, what else? Oh, my radio. Got my radio from Japan, which I'm in love with. Okay, I don't know what station it's connected to right now. I'm trying to reconnect it to this jazz station I've been listening to. It's 88.1 K jazz if you're in the LA area. But this thing is kind of like finicky and difficult to use because it's an older radio. Okay, <laughs> so sometimes I need to go outside to find the jazz station because um, for some reason it doesn't, sometimes it can't connect initially to the station that I want it to when I'm in the house. But if I go outside, sometimes it connects to the jazz station. Um, but yeah, I love this little thing. Normally when I'm just like around the house, I like to have some type of background noise on, whether it's music or a long YouTube video. And sometimes when I'm trying to play music, I have to like decide what I want to listen to. And sometimes it's nice to not have to decide and then just turn the radio on so it's playing like whatever is on. And if it's the jazz station, then normally I'll like it.
So I already opened the box to try this out, so I can't do like a nice unboxing. But Soltec, who is the sponsor of this video, just recently released the LED bar light, um, and it's called the Grove LED. It is currently available for pre-order, and then pre-ordered orders will ship out and deliver like September, October. So it is a grow light bar. So it's perfect for like under kitchen shelves or on a bookshelf or something. I'm not sure where I want to put these yet, but I'm gonna try a spot on my bookshelf over there. So it's really easy to set it up. You literally just like take the adhesive off and then stick it on under something and then you plug it in. There are also different mounting options if you don't want to just use adhesive, I'm pretty sure you can screw it in. And what's really cool about this is that it's magnetic. Um, so the bracket that's holding it up, you're able to pop it off the light. I don't know, I think that's like a really nice touch. So the bar is like a 360 swivel. Since it's magnetic, you can kind of change the direction. Um, okay, let's go plug this in. I put the grow light underneath the shelf because I wanted a place to put my platycerium. On my platycerium funchiki, it needed a space where it could grow its leaves and then also where it can get good light. And after putting this light up, um, oh, by the way, I just used the adhesive. The adhesive is super sticky. But yeah, after I set this light up, I realized that this light actually has a lot of really cool features. At first, I thought it was just a regular, nice, like LED light bar. After I set it up and read the instructions, I realized that you can actually turn it on by double tapping the light body. So it can turn on and turn off by just tapping it. So when I first plugged this light in, one of the thoughts that I had was that it's going to be too bright for people. Um, and then I read the instructions and then I figured out that you can dim it. To dim it, you double tap, but on the second tap, you hold, you hold your finger there and then it'll get dimmer and it can get pretty dim. And then to get it to be brighter again, you double tap and hold the second tap. Also, you guys remember how I said that there are these magnetic brackets that hold up the light, which allow you to swivel it. So that's a really good feature because if you don't want to look directly into the light bulb itself, um, you can just swivel it back into the cabinet or the shelf or whatever you have this underneath. And that way you're not getting like blinded by the bright grow light. Thank you to Soltech for sending me this light and sponsoring this video and my channel. And if you want one, I'll put the link to it in the description and you can use my code Benji15 for 15% off. The secret of a Good morning. So today I'm headed to Jahao's shop called 1010 in downtown LA because he is hosting a Kokedama workshop and I also need to pick up glasses from the glasses store that his shop is integrated with um, called Bonnie Clyde. And Bonnie Clyde is the glasses shop that Jahao did the plant installation for in Tokyo. Okay, I hope you guys got that. But yeah, because I helped out, the owner was like, hey, we'll give you a free pair of glasses. So yeah, I'm just gonna go hang out at the store, maybe help with the workshop a little bit, get some glasses. And I guess this will be my first time showing you guys Jahao's new shop. So feel free to visit his shop. I think it's open Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. Again, in the video, don't judge me. Show coming out. I actually didn't end up watching it. Yeah. John messaged me about the dinner thing. What? Are these blue light lenses? What time does it start, John?
kind of weird taking the lamp out. This one, are they the bench? Yeah. That's perfect. And then the common stream will suck the water. Oh, that's so nice. nice. Oh, so cute. You don't have to walk. So why can I add a link to my Instagram? Can't you? It's really hot up here right now and we don't have a curtain for our window here. So Chris and I are going to go to Ikea to get a curtain rod for up here and then I'm going to put a curtain on the window. Um, but yeah, I really want to eventually like get this room together. It's kind of been... Mm, I don't know. I haven't really worked on it too much. Um, but look, we did get this little curtain right here to block the closet. Okay, we're out of here. Can we get a cooling comforter because it's way too hot upstairs? Star and star. They're getting ready for Halloween. Chris is excited. Oh, that's really cute. Do we have tea lights still? Uh, no, I don't think so. Got variegated fake plants now. I can't even tell what this is. Maybe it's supposed to be an alocasia, but it kind of looks like a philodendron. I don't think it's like a fry deck. Weird shape down here. I've always wanted a gasteria. Maybe I'll get this. Okay, so here is the stuff that I got from Ikea. This is a duvet insert. It's like a cooling duvet insert because the ones that we have from Brooklyn and are really nice. It's just that they're way too hot for right now because we don't have a central AC unit. So it gets pretty hot, especially upstairs, and it's even hot at night. So I wanted to get like a thinner duvet insert. And this one is actually, hmm, it already feels pretty cool. I got this stainless steel wire curtain rod because ever since I went to Japan, I've been kind of into stainless steel and I'm trying to find ways to incorporate it into my house. And I also think that um, this is like a very low key curtain rod because it's just a wire. And I think it'll look pretty nice. Hi, Theo. What's up, Theo? I feel like the people haven't seen you in a while because I've been posting my Japan vlogs. Um, oh, that actually reminds me. I need to show you guys th something after I put this duvet in. It's really cute. Our friends made it for us while they were watching Theo. Um, it's going to be a lot nicer at night when we're sleeping because the previous duvet was just way, way too hot. Hi, Theo. Hi, baby. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. Um, our friends Danny and Ricky watched Theo for us while we were in Japan, and they made this little scrapbook of the time that they watched him. Um, and I'm really appreciative of them for watching him for two weeks, and like you'll see from the scrapbook, but they really took care of him, and it made like my stay in Japan a lot more comfortable. Um, just knowing that Theo is well taken care of because this is the first time that we've been away from Theo for this long. Look how cute the front is. Um, it's like his first day of school type thing for little kids. When I grow up, I want to be a poop star. <laughs> Subject, nap, food, kibble. Look at Theo in that little hat. Yeah, I love all of these pictures and it was a surprise and they gave it to us when we, come, when we came back. Um, and they put so much effort into this, it's so cute. Theo as a dinosaur. Spidey senses tingling for a walk. Oh, he's so cute in that one. And then on the back, there's Theo edited on Taylor Swift's album cover. Um, super cute though, super, super cute. And look at him, he's just looking at me right now. Theo, do you miss your uncles? Do you miss Danny and Ricky? A while back, I planted this sunflower out here and it used to be like up to my hips. And I like how tall it is, but it just fell over, which is unfortunate. I think we have a little bit of a vole problem. So either this was just too heavy or a vole came and like ate the roots and then it tipped over. This is also a California native sunflower. 
Um, so it has these small flowers on it. They're not huge like what you typically think of when you think of sunflowers. My dad and I worked on this for a sponsorship. I have the sponsorship with this California organization called Save Our Water. Um, so I replanted this area with these more drought tolerant plants. We just transplanted them yesterday. So they're kind of in like a wilting shock phase because it's so hot right now, but they should bounce back. Um, but yeah, we cleared out some of the ginger, cleaned it up a little bit, moved some aloe there and some agave. And then I put this Dracaena marginata that I had in a pot that was outside in here. And it's gonna look really good in like maybe a month, I think. Um, I might end up cutting all of these back, like back to the bottom and then have them regrow and just put out new growth so it fits the spot better. And these also grow really fast too. It's been so hot lately, but now it's cooling down a little bit before it was like 98 degrees Fahrenheit every day for like two weeks. Um, Cause I think California has been going through a pretty bad heat wave, but now it's getting better. So I'm trying to enjoy summer while it's here because it's already August. And then we're gonna approach September and October. And I mean, that's how, that's how months work, but uh, you know, I just feel like time's going by so quickly. But I am excited for the holidays because like October, November, December, January, those are probably my favorite times of the year just because of all the holidays and the weather in California is really nice then too. Oh, also look at this rock that I found. I found this on the ground. I thought it looked kind of nice. I'm gonna wash it off and then I might use it for like a planting scape or like use it in a pot with some type of succulent. Washing my rock, washing my rock. I love the shape of this thing. It lays flat too. Looks like a rock couch going back inside now. It's getting cooler, so I might work on the curtain right now. Something that's kind of nice about this room is that the ceiling is really short. So I don't need a ladder to get up to the ceiling to install the curtain rod. Oh, also look at this fiddly fig. Um, the landlord just had it out on the ground out of its pot and she said I can have it. So I took it and I potted it and it's growing new leaves. It has such a funky, cool shape to it. Okay, I got the mount things up. Now I need to figure out how to get the wire through it. I'm trying to cut this wire right now, but it's honestly so hard because I don't think I'm using the right wire cutting tool. You guys, I actually got this up. I was having such a hard time with this. Whew. It's the next day and I am going to pot the guest area that I got from Ikea into this pot. I got this pot from Meepa's Pots and Plants. And then it also comes with the saucer pedestal. But yeah, let's go repot this. Okay. So Chris and I just went to the store called the Cactus Center and then we bought these plants um, for my pots from Japan. And I'm thinking of doing like a whole video of potting these plants in the pots and then kind of like describing why I chose the pots or why I chose the plants for the pots and then also like what top dressing I'm going to use because um, at the Cactus Center I was also able to buy a lot of different top dressings. Some of you guys like requested a long video of plant care. I think that'll be fun to film and I'm really excited about all these new plants very inspired by what I saw in Japan. This is a Dorstenia. This is one of my favorite Dorstenia, or this is one of my favorite genus right now is Dorstenia. So this is a Gasteria. I've never grown one of these before, but I really like how they look. They're kind of like a mix of Haworthia, snake plants, and aloes to me. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've gotten more into like succulents and slower growing 
lower maintenance plants lately. It's just like less work to care for them and then I don't have to repot them as often and I don't have to water them as often, which is a big plus. Because they just don't like, you know, they don't grow as fast and they don't require as much water. So yeah, I obviously still like love my tropical plants. I think I just don't want to have too many like philodendron, monstera. These also with climbing plants like philodendron and monstera, you also have to stake them and you have to like accommodate to their growth. Otherwise they just look kind of bad or they won't grow very optimally. Um, it's like having too many tropical plants. I think becomes quite a lot of work after a while. Like it kind of just starts adding up and then you always have to get new pots, more soil, taller stake. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm pretty content with the amount of like philodendron and monster that I have right now. Then maybe in the future I'll get more, but I'm really into lower maintenance stuff right now. Theo's back there, can you guys see? And I'm shaking it up so the soil gets in between the plant's roots. Now I'm going to add a top dressing. Let me see which ones I got. Do you like how it looks, Chris? Okay, so I got a couple of different top dressings from the Cactus Center. There's this larger one, smaller one, and there's this nice red one, and then there's a tan one that's, I think it's the same, just tan. And I don't know which one I want use. I think a mix of this one and the red might be nice. Okay, let's see how this looks. This is my first time using like a this kind of top dressing. Oh it looks good. <laughs> yeah I got this from the Cactus Center in the San Gabriel Valley if you're in LA. What would it look like if I put some bigger rocks in just mixed with it? I have like 10 mosquito bites right now because I was working outside earlier. So here's my little gisteria. I like that top dressing, it looks pretty good. Fix this. I think in the next video I'm gonna repot these guys, so stay tuned. I'm really excited about it. Thank you guys for watching, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. I wonder if I should do a thumbnail right now. Maybe I can just do it later. I don't really know what I want to do right now.